We're going to take a look at um, what I call a packet capture. A packet capture is just basically having opened up a tool like Wireshark here, captured uh, traffic and saved it as a file. And I'm going to show you a basic DNS exchange. So when you open up Wireshark, remember it wants to know which network cards you're interested in monitoring. But I actually don't care at this point about monitoring any uh, particular interface. So I'm not going to turn that on. You can also go up here to capture, click interfaces, and it shows you all the interfaces and um, you can choose to start or stop whichever one you want to. Pretty easy to get around. It's uh, probably in your best interest to really get to, to know um, one program or two programs that do this type of uh, analysis just so that you can uh, work with it. Now I'm going to go to this little program I have, WS Capture, and open up this DNS uh, packet capture and it's just like I told you, very simple, straightforward. A, a standard DNS query is the first packet and a DNS response. Okay, so the standard query is just what it sounds like. I'm going to make this middle section a little bit bigger so I have some room to expand it. We know at, um, at the Ethernet uh, information we have these, uh, these MAC addresses. Now, remember how uh, this all works when it comes to the actual MAC addresses. Uh, the source IP address, the destination IP addresses, these are on different subnets. Um, that means that technically my MAC address that you see on the destination MAC is not the destination MAC address associated with that packet. It's actually the MAC address of the gateway in my network, my source addresses network, that I used to get out into the internet world. So be careful when you read Macs. These do not necessarily mean that they go with the actual destination address, especially if that address is um, on another subnet and you're going through a routing device. So that's just the address of my router, but the address of the destination is valid for the IP layer, just not at layer two. All right, internet protocol. Again, it's uh, IP version four, uh, which we can tell by looking at this uh, four byte address, this four octet address. Uh, IP version six is a lot longer than this. It's, um, instead of 32 bits like this one, it's 128 bits. We aren't doing any type of quality of service, which is where the uh, differentiated services falls. Uh, no flags to tell us about fragment offsets. Time to live uh, is a nice easy way of saying after 128 routers, if I still haven't reached my destination, I'm giving up and many other types of flags that um, you can get into by learning more about uh, the different uh, layers. I'm just trying to give you an overview while I'm getting through this. Now this is interesting. In the world of, uh, of uh, DNS, we can choose to use either UDP, the User Data Gram Protocol, or we can use TCP, the Transmission Control Pro Protocol. The User Data Gram Protocol is what we call an unacknowledged or best effort protocol. Now it still uses uh, port numbers, and again, the uh, port numbers, this rapid base, just happens to be some application associated with this port number. It does not at all mean that my source, um, my source machine is running some program called rapid base. Again, remember that Wireshark tries to replace um, port numbers with the well-known names. It doesn't mean that's what it's running. Destination port 53 is always DNS, um, and that's in the, uh, the realm of the, of the first 1,024 port numbers that we called the well-known. All right, so anyway, so source port, destination port using UDP means there's no flags, there's no three-way handshake, there's no acknowledgement, I'm sending the packet and I have no idea whether the destination got my, at my uh, packet or not. Other than uh, it appears that it did because somebody responded back to me uh, and that was the uh, um, the next packet down, the domain name system response. So if I had not had that, I might have thought, well, it, it didn't work. Uh, there's no acknowledgement. Anyway, uh, this is the query, right? I'm sending the DNS uh, query. I have just one question, as it says here, under the flags, and I'm going to expand the queries tab and come down here, and it looks like what I'm looking for is the IP address for this domain name. So that's what I'm uh, basically asking for. And uh, down at the very, very bottom, uh, what you're seeing here is the actual breakdown of what the packet looks like in its hexadecimal and a, if uh, available, a text translation of those values. Okay, so let's look at the uh, response. Now, the response coming back from us uh, is again, um, 
UDP. Source port is uh, the DNS server responding to me at this uh, at my advertised uh, source port. That's its destination. And um, when we look at the uh, response time, we see that uh, that it is an answer. Uh, it talks about the authority and additional uh, information that we're going to break down. In fact, if I hit the flags, all right, it tells me by, based on the type of flags that this is a response, uh, that it, the query was done recursively, and that the server that I used was able to do these recursions, which is important. Here's the query that I did. The query that, I, that you're responding to is this one to this uh, hotmail.com or hotmail.msn.com. I was looking for a type A, which is a um, DNS host record. And then I'm going to expand the answers. And the answers section here, expand it, is telling me that that uh, address or that URL has this address. So there we go. That was a nice, easy uh, response. Now, I just brought that uh, answer. I, I just uh, brought it back up, so I, I collapsed it. Authoritative name servers. This is also interesting. Uh, it's nice to see which name servers are considered authoritative. And what that means is that these are the actual servers that uh, house those host records that I was talking about. So um, even though you did what we call a recursive lookup, meaning your DNS server said, I don't know what the IP address is. I'll go ask somebody authoritative. Uh, this is the authoritative uh, server. And additional records comes back. And that is that there are other uh, IP addresses that can be associated with that site um, or additional records that are that are available to you. Uh, these are other name servers that basically that are coming back to uh, meet up with these uh, authoritative name servers. But it is important to know that there are other locations that I can go to um, for each of these uh, addresses. So I just clicked on uh, as an example here. Uh, NS1 says the uh, that you know it has uh, addresses. Uh, NS2. Again, right, has its own information. And it's just kind of the breakdown of how much information is coming back from a standard DNS request. All right, so again, I made a query to my DNS server. Eventually, um, the authoritative DNS server responded to, uh, to my DNS server and they gave me that information back. And odds are that that destination right here, this uh, destination DNS server, uh, because we didn't have a packet capture going on at, the, at that end of it, what we missed was it asking the actual authoritative servers and getting its own response back to eventually send us a response. Uh, so we didn't get to see the full picture, but this is at least between my host and my DNS server, so you can see a typical DNS type of request.